Hi, this is Spider Class 101, session number three that we're doing in a series this summer to give you some information uh, regarding spiders, some facts about them, so that whether you're uh, a professional in the spider world or just newly beginning as an amateur, hopefully we'll cover some things that you'll find helpful or, or interesting. Um, in today's uh, lesson, we're going to talk about anatomy. Now, <laughs> Not my anatomy, thank goodness for you. No, the anatomy of a spider. So as we begin this particular uh, session, uh, we're going to go through uh, the makeup of a spider uh, and ask some important questions such as, what's the real difference between an insect and a spider? So we'll go through some of those questions as well as go through the anatomy of a spider. So um, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day. I'm just out here in my front yard uh, trying to find an insect on some of my flowers. So let's take a little closer look and see what we can see over here. So what is the difference between an insect and a spider anyway? I'm out in front of my house and this is a uh, some of my flowers out here. And here comes an insect to check it out. So what's the difference between an insect and a spider? Well, there are three major differences. Do you happen to know what they are? Let's see if you can guess them. An insect, or what's known as an arthropod, has body parts divided into three parts, a pair of antenna, and three pair of legs, or six legs total. A spider has a body that's divided into two parts, no antenna, and four pair of legs, or eight legs total. Note the antenna, three segment body on this insect. But they all have antenna, six legs, and three body parts. Just so happens there's a little Phidippus audix right down here on the leaf. Just a little guy. And he's looking right up at me. There's a spider. Let's review the arachnid's general characteristics. First, the spider has four pairs of legs, or a total of eight legs. Secondly, it has two body segments, the first being the cephalothorax. That is made up of the head and the thorax region of the spider. Secondly, is the abdomen. That's the large bulbous part of the spider. Now let's take a more detailed look of the anatomy of a spider using some videos of spiders I've taken in the field. Here's a couple of diagrams of where we're going to be going when we take a look at spiders, pictures of them and videos I've taken, and try to take a look at the various body parts of those particular spiders. We'll be going over this in more detail in just a moment. This view allows us to see where the eyes of the spider are located in the front of the cephalothorax. Here's a front view of a jumping spider. You can see the arrangement of the four eyes in front. They have two on the lateral side and two more in the back, making a total of eight eyes total. In this female jumping spider, you'll see the green iridescent chalicera. They also come in blue. The jaws or mouthpieces, or the chalicera as they're called, are found here. This is a particular iridescent mouthpiece of the jumping spider, Phidippisodix. Right below the chalicera, you'll see the pointed black fangs. And those are the razor sharp pointed pieces, and they use those to inject their venom in their prey. They're also used to capture the prey and to hold it closely and tight. 
Here we get a good view of the mouthpieces just behind the pedipalps. There are two of them, and here they're kind of white color, almost like an ivory color. You will notice the mouthpiece here, mouthpiece moving behind the fangs. Kind of an interesting shot that you don't see a whole lot of. Let's take a look at the ventral side of the spider, or the bottom or belly part. The coxa are the final end leg pieces that actually attach, attach themselves to the sternum. And there's the sternum where all the legs connect. The book lungs. This is one of the ways they breathe. It's a stacked up layered approach in which the blood passes through these lungs, picks up oxygen, and takes it throughout the rest of the body. Most spiders have book lungs. However, some have a little different type of breathing apparatus. They're located on either side of the spider's reproductive organs. And this is also another good view of the book lung and the genital area of the female spider. The epigenum are located on either side of the reproductive area. They are actually covers of, they go over the opening of the uh, genital tracts. The scape is that protruding part of the spider that allows the male to find the female's genital area quicker while reaching under her with his pedipalps. And the spinnerets, located on the tail end of the spider. Here's another view of the spinnerets. Oh, hi. In our next session on Spider 101, Part 4, we're going to be looking at the internal anatomy of a spider. So be sure to come back and check out that particular spider video. And as always, have a great day.